Welcome, everybody. I am Lisa Kelly. I'm the Director of Digital Media here at Fisher House Foundation, and we are so excited to have you here. And I am very excited. Thank you for tuning in to the it's we're here to talk about the Fisher Service Award with Shay. Um, she's been at the foundation for officially a year now um, running this award program, and I'm so excited to have you here today. Welcome, Shay. We're here live on several platforms, including LinkedIn. Yay. Well, thank you for the warm introduction. I appreciate it. It is my pleasure to be here with all of you today. Um, and actually, I just realized that tomorrow is my birthday. So what? I want to have a little bit of fun today. So we're going to be yes. giving away a few items throughout the live. And I was thinking maybe three or four Fisher House swag bags. And right. also our partner, Military Times, would like to gift a Military Times social share to three very lucky, randomly selected nonprofits watching today. So this That's opportunity awesome. will allow for them to promote their nonprofit and or program on the Military Times social network, which has an audience of 3.7 million plus. Um, I do wanna put a quick disclaimer on that. If you are selected for the social share, we will We'll perform a digital footprint review before connecting you with them. And so while I'm feeling, you know, ready to get into this, I think we should give away our first social share. What do you think, Lisa? Uh, absolutely. There's a lot of people on here right now that are, I'm sure would love that. And a lot of happy birthdays for you, by the way. Yay, thank you. <laughs> so I think we should just select one random nonprofit to just kick this off. Do you have one for me? All right, we have, let's see here. And while, while she's looking at that, I do want to tell you guys um, about the something the Military Times is doing. So the Military Times has a mission to honor, support, and remember service members, veterans, and their families, and the organizations that help them. So if you're not aware of this, they have a wonderful directory that pro provides no charge media, editorial coverage, free coverings, and more. And I believe someone's going to drop that into the chat for everyone that's watching. That's so awesome. Who, I will. We do winner. have a winner. But, um, sh actually, also, I believe Shay from the Headstrong Project. Um, she is the grant coordinator at the Headstrong Project. Congratulations, oh. Shay. Congratulations, Shay. This is amazing. Um, so I will go ahead and take this down. Wow, we've got a lot of amazing nonprofits on here. This is really exciting, everyone. All righty. You ready, Lisa? I'm, in. I'm ready. I'm excited. Let's jump right into the questions. You ready for me? I'm ready. Okay. So what is the Fisher Service Award? Yes, so Fisher House and Military Times Foundations have partnered to create the Fisher Service Award. Um, it was formerly known as Newman's Own Award, but mm -hmm. this award program awards nonprofits with innovative programs, improving the quality of life for active duty reserve, National Guard veterans and their families. Since this program began in 1999, it's distributed more than $2.75 million across 200 nonprofits. Um, this year, we will award $250,000 to be divided among the top applying nonprofits. And each award winner will also receive an advertisement package, excuse me, valued at $34,000 from the Military Times. That's amazing. Well, I'm seeing a few questions on here. Um, who can apply or, um, you know, what are the eligibility criteria? Okay, that's a great question. We only have three requirements. Your organization must be defined as a 501c nonprofit. You must have an innovative program and that program must improve the quality of life for active duty reserve, National Guard, veterans and or their families. Last year, we received about 570 eligible applications. So, if you meet those requ uh, three requirements, we strongly encourage you to apply. That's great. That's you great. know, okay. I told you, I'm going to have fun. Let's give away a swag bag. Let's, Let's give away a swag bag. Okay. Let's see if Stacy Villadu, who Stacy is kind of our facilitator on there. Can you give us a name? Uh, let see if Stacy can send us a name. Yay. We've got so many nonprofits. This is really exciting. This is our first time live on LinkedIn. And this is going amazing. This is, this is really great. Let's see if Stacey has anybody or, um, let, oh, I can find somebody. Let me see here. <laughs> <laughs> 
How about, oh, should I see TBC typing? Okay, okay. let's do um, JP from the Honor Foundation. Okay. Congratulations, JP. I will be sending that out to you. Please, in the chat, send your uh, mailing address to um, the Fisher House privately, and then we can go ahead and um, I'll get that out today. Awesome. This is so exciting. I love, I love giving out free stuff. Everybody loves free things. Um, so are there any restrictions on how the funds that come from Fisher Service Award can be used? You know, that's, I appreciate that question coming through. In past years, we had a couple of restrictions on how those funds could be used, but this year we are lifting many of those. So that's award great. funding may be used to execute any necessary program expense. This is gonna include wages or salaries, supplies, capital campaigns, building repair, uh, professional fees. And an example of that would be like mental health counselors or physical therapists. I love that, that's so great. Um, we just received a question that I thought was really good. If you're not, I'm not a grant writer, but is the application difficult to complete? I know I'm not one also. <laughs> First, let me say, and I get this question all the time, you do not need to be a professional grant writer to apply for this award. The application is broken down into three sections, organization, program, and budget. The organization fo uh, tab focuses on general questions about the organization, such as the website URL and the mission statement. Um, it may also ask uh, about your 501c status, and this is important because you may need to provide proof of that later on in that process. The second uh, tab is going to dive into the details of your program. So we ask your org if your organization has already initiated the program and if so, when. Um, in this section, you can choose one category that best describe your program's focus. And I'm gonna let you guys know, if you have a program that has not yet begun, you can still apply for this award, right? Mm -hmm. You would just put on your application when you expect for it to um, begin. And then the third step is going to be that budget section. Um, this is, we're just gonna ask you to provide a simple budget. I had a question just um, this morning, you know, what, how do we go about providing that budget, right? Just answer it the best that you can. There is no formula to it. Just kind of try your best to give the best information possible there. Okay, um, and in, in regards to that, does it, sorry, in regards to that, does it have to be um, an audited report? It can just be the budget. Just the budget, just a generalized budget. We're not really trying to get in the weeds in that too much, but we're just kind of, we're wanting to know if you are awarded this, pro, if you're, if you win, or if you're one of our award recipients, how would you utilize those funds? Awesome. That is awesome. Let's see here. And one of the things I want to say, because I just saw a question um, in the chat, when is the deadline for applications? So applications are going to be due by March 23rd, um, and it is going, you have to get them in, okay, by 9 p.m. Eastern time, okay? So please, please, please make sure you get those in. Yes. And you want to take a break and do some swag? Yeah, let's do some more swag. Okay. All right. I'm ready. Let's see. How about... Um, Let's see. I know I saw somebody pop up. Um, and while you're looking for that, I see another um, question come in. We do not have question. any um, programs that we're looking for specifically. We do not have any funding priorities. So, you know, we are just looking for innovative programs. And by innovative, we understand that there may be other programs out there doing what you do. But what makes your program different? What are you doing different yeah. than others out there? Yeah. Got someone for me? I do. We've got Ginger. Oh, I just saw her last name and now I, let me find it. <laughs> Is it Ginger Miller? Yes. 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 Going through yes. here. It's going fast. This yes, absolutely. Ms. So Ginger, congratulations. Questions. We will be sending you out a swag bag. Thank you for watching. Yes. And I know I saw a question about the different, um, the different levels of winning. Um, can you explain that just a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So each year, we don't necessarily have a set amount of award winners each year, but typically it's been five um, to six. And so we will have a top winner. Last year, that top winner received $90,000, and then the other four received 40. Um, so that's 
then typically the breakdown. If we have six winners, then obviously we'd look at that and and break the funds down accordingly. I love that. Okay, so give us a little inside scoop here. What are common mistakes you see people make on their application? Oh, this is a really, really, really good one. So I think the number one mistake when filling out the application is not being clear and concise on why your program is innovative. Again, we understand there are other programs with similar miss missions, but what makes your program different? Um, the second mistake that I would say is not including in attachments to enhance your application, right? During uh, that step in the process, we're not just looking for like IRS forms or form 990s. We're looking for in information on your program, like infographics, yeah. photos of your program in action, testimonials are a really great example. Um, and you can attach up to three. So please, please, please take advantage of that. Yeah. And I want to let you know, because I get this all the time, please don't email me your attachment separately. They all must be uploaded online. I love reading them, but please put them through the application portal. Absolutely. Videos are always great. I love seeing the videos come in from some of our winners, which are, they're always amazing. So um, another great question. Okay. I think you've already answered this one, actually, or you've answered this one. Can someone apply if the program has not yet been created? Yes, yes. The answer to that uh, is yes. If an innovative program with a future with a future start date is eligible, um, just please be clear. I would say the only thing is please, please, please be clear in your description of what makes your program different than similar existing programs. Yeah, I love that. And someone asked, can you provide a video with testimonials? Absolutely. Um, and I think we have if someone's asking, can an organization submit more than one application for different programs? I absolutely love this question. Yes, yes, and yes. I am encouraging you guys to, if you have a program, and, and I'm going to back up a little bit. I noticed last year when people were submitting their application, they were trying to squeeze all this information in. And so what I'm saying to you is if you have more than one program, please submit multiple applications, right? Yeah, now, I will tell you, you will have to have different email addresses for each entry. Okay. So you can't okay. use the same one across the board. Um, but yes, please. And speaking of applications and entering them, everyone, regardless of if you've applied in the past or not, you must create a new account. I get that question all the time. Um, just make sure you get in, you create a new account, fill out the application. And if you want to submit a second one, just use a, another email address. So I am feeling again, like it's time for a social share. What do you yes. think? Oh, let's, let's give one away. the social share have? for Military Times. Okay, let's see for Military Times social share. Here we have, let's see. Sorry, I'm getting a lot of, <laughs> a lot of questions. How about, let's see here. Okay, bear with me for a second. No worries. Anyone how, yet? How about Eileen Hevron from Positive Teams? Okay. Congratulations, Eileen. Yay. This is awesome. <laughs> awesome, awesome. We will um, reach out to you. Yes, we will reach out to you. If you reach out, um, I believe Stacey Villadeau is um, facilitating and she'll take all that information. Um, I do have one quick question also coming in. If you already submitted, can you go back and add attachments? Absolutely, absolutely. Oh, the application um, portal, You once you submit your application, you have the ability to go back in and make updates um, up until Great. the deadline. So please, I encourage all of you to do that. Go back in and add those attachments today if you'd like. That's awesome. How are winners selected? Is it a set number of winners each year? I think you said there sometimes it's different. Yes, yeah, so award recipients are selected by an esteemed panel of judges based upon the program's innovation. Again, we push innovation here, right? Um, so judges evaluate the program based on a few things, four things I like to say. Um, the program's description. Is it clearly written and is it easy to understand? Is the program innovative? What makes this program, again, different than others out there? resources. Is this program executable? Okay, that's a big one, right? That's and then huge. relevance. Is this program filling a much needed gap in our military community? Again, we don't have a set number of winners each year. So for example, in 2000, 
one, or excuse me, 2021 and 22, we had five winners. And in 2020, we had six. So it just really depends on the applications that come in each year. Yeah, that's awesome. What are your funding priorities this year? Okay, so again, a great question. Um, it's important to note that we do not have any specific funding priorities. There are no themes okay. across winning programs. Each year is different based upon the competitive applications uh, submitted during that cycle. Great. And we have some people who their organization applies each year but are not selected and they start to get a bit discouraged. What would you say to kind of encourage that? Encourage them. Say- please don't be discouraged. Each year it's different, right? Based upon the application submitted in that cycle. So we encourage you to apply every single year. Um, In fact, many of our award winners have applied several times before coming out on top. Um, If possible, I would make all of you, all of you, Fisher Service Award winners, right? Because I love all the work you're doing for the military community. And as an Army veteran, um, it truly means a lot to me for all the work that you guys are doing. So thank you so much. Um, There's some amazing things happening here. What about a swag bag? Let's give out a swag bag. A swag bag. All right. Let's see here. I won't take this much time this time. How about Lee Taylor, I'm, I may say that wrong, Nicholson, that from the Vet Art Project. Oh, okay. Awesome. All right. Congratulations. Um, yes. Way to go, Lee. Everybody loves some swag. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do have, let's see, one. Okay, so we have that question. And I think you've already answered this, but it somebody asked if uh 501c3 apply it, as long as you have a 501c anything status. anything then you're you're eligible to apply we keep that open and, and yeah. kind of broad for a reason so as long as you're a 501c you can apply okay awesome and i think you already closed when when the applications close but it's always good to re-emphasize that and also where they can go to apply Yes. So I'm going to tell all of you guys to go to fisherserviceaward.org or com, both work. Um, And there you will find an apply button. And once you click on that, that will take you to the application portal. All applications must be submitted online by 8.59 p.m. Eastern time on March 23rd, 2023. I wish I could extend this out for you guys, but there are no extensions, no exceptions to this. You can return to modify your application, like I said before, before the online system closes. Um, But the only thing I will say is many of you have tried to send in hard copies, okay? Please just use the application portal. (laughs) I love reading and getting that through the mail, but please, please, please use the application portal. Yeah. I've been around for a long time and I used to see these giant binders go out, lots and lots of paper when they were sending everything to the judges and it was quite a lot. (laughs) Um, What's the timeline for when applicants will know if they're awarded or when the recipients will receive funding? I'm, I'm going to actually kind of go through the timeline because I, I feel like a lot of people have this question. So we begin taking ex- applications from January to March. And then from March to August, we are judging and we're reviewing and reading hundreds and hundreds of applications. And so in the initial wave, let's use the numbers from last year, we received 570. We narrowed those down to 50. And then those 50 applications go before our judges. um, And then they narrow those down to 15. And then we come up with our winners. So all that's happening between March and August. Between August and October, I am planning for the ceremony that happens in Washington, D.C. It's a phenomenal event. Um, If any of you guys are interested in attending, please send me an email that will be dropped in the chat. I'd love to chat with you. Um, But then we typically have a wonderful um, reception, then award ceremony that next day um, in D.C. to recognize and celebrate our award winners. Wonderful. And I love the little plug in for actually our reception is at one of the previous winners which I love, you know, becoming full circle with that. Dog Tag um, Bakery. It's wonderful. It's yes. in Georgetown. Um, I tr- I'm i telling you, every time I go in there, I end up with like bags and bags <laughs> of stuff, hauling it back to my house. So if you haven't been to Dog Tag, go check it out. Very good. Their ginger snap cookies are my favorite. <laughs> 
Um, interesting question. So my program will take place on um, a DOD installation. Am I still eligible? Yes, you are actually. You will be asked to present documentation that your program um, is approved for operation on a DOD installation by the installation commander or their designee. Uh, that's the, the only thing you will have to do in addition to everyone else. That makes sense, perfect. Um, last question, one other question I see on here. Can you share tips to help the application process? Okay, let me think here. Yes, I can. I have a lot of tips. Let me think <laughs> through this. Um, so number one, I would say proofread your application. Okay. Your application is going before judges that will review. And for many times, this is the first time they're learning about your program. So you want to make a, a wonderful first impression. So please make sure you guys are reviewing and proofreading that. Clearly and concisely answer the questions. Keeping in mind, we're looking for innovative programs. Um, I would say the next thing is provide attachments, again, that help us better understand your program. We're looking for information that will help paint the picture of the, uh, excuse me, the innovative picture that makes your program stand out against other applicants. Um, four, which is extremely important, okay, <laughs> I will reach out to you during the application process. So please, please, please don't block me. When I'm sending you guys emails, <laughs> it's really me. It's not a robot, Okay. <laughs> Um, I send out little newsletters throughout the judging process. Please just make sure you have my email saved because a lot of those things are time sensitive. And five, and I think the most important tip will be, please do not wait until the last minute to submit your application. That to me is so important. And I'm going to tell you guys why. I try for everybody um, until too many come in, but I try for everyone to kind of do a quick scan right? I randomly select awesome. a couple each day just to make sure that everything looks okay. And I try to do it up until about two weeks out because then it's just too many and I can't, yeah. I can't do it, but I will try to help you out as much as possible. I'm sure there are some watching today that I've spoken with you and you shot me a note and I've shot back like, Hey, it looks great. Um, so please, please, please get those in as soon as possible. That's awesome. That's so helpful for people. I know, I know. And I think that, yes, I want to give away a social share. Do you have okay. any, do you have any nonprofits that are engaging oh that have gosh. been with us? Who do we have? So many, so many. All right. Let's see what, what Stacy says. Okay. Well, Stacy, I'm going to let Stacy pull this up. Do you know Do people's overhead versus admin costs, does that come straight from the 990 or their budget for the year? So that would come from their budget. Just kind of take a okay. rough look at that. I, I'm i seeing that a lot of people um, through emails just that I've been going through over the uh, last couple of weeks, they're really um, getting caught up on that portion of the application, right? We're just looking for a rough estimate of those numbers, right? We want to make sure that the programs that we're selecting the funds, if you're awarded, are going towards the program. And I'm going to give you guys an example of something last year. So last year, I received um, a person, uh, uh, excuse me, a program's application, and their marketing and their overhead was like at 82%, and like 10% was going to the program. Well, we we want to fund your program. We want we want to help. So just kind of keep those things in mind. Be, as, be yeah. honest, right? Be honest. But there is a box that will say, if your number is a little high, tell us why. And if it makes sense, then you're good to go. Yeah, absolutely. That makes a lot of sense. Okay, Stacy's just sent me one. And we have Jessica Andrews from the Marine Raider Foundation. Yay, congratulations, Yay. Jessica. Congratulations, Jessica. Yay. That's awesome. And just a quick reminder for all of you guys that won those social shares, um, we will have to do a quick quick, quick digital footprint review, right? Just to make sure that everything is great there. Um, but once that is complete, I'm hoping by say Wednesday, cause I want to celebrate my birthday tomorrow. Right. Um, I will get those out um, to, and connect you with the military times there. This has been so amazing. And I just want to say to everybody, so everybody knows that we are recording this. And so we are going to post this um, on our YouTube page. It'll be here on LinkedIn. And um, we'll also have it actually, hopefully, on the Newman's or uh, 
excuse me, the Fisher Service Award <laughs> webpage. Um, I haven't done that slip in a long time. Um, but this has been so amazing. Just, you know, being able to talk to you about this program. I love getting to hear about all the different um, nonprofits once we start get you know, they start rolling in. And, you know, if you know of a 501c that's doing wonderful work in the community, please tag them and let them know about this, you know, tag them in this, um, in this post so they'll see this live and find out more information about the Fisher Service Award and, you know, how we can help their programs. Absolutely. Absolutely. And what I will say, um, yes, please share this live. I would greatly appreciate it because we do want to get the word out um, and reach as many organizations as possible. Um, but what I will do, um, because there are some people that just don't have LinkedIn, I didn't realize yeah. um, that if you didn't have LinkedIn that you could not join us today. And so what I will do um, is I will randomly select someone um, well, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll do two. I'll randomly select two people that will watch this after it's posted, I believe on YouTube and send you guys out a swag bag. Okay. So I will make sure that we, we contact you um, and get, you know, I'll try to contact you if you have an application in. So make sure you're watching it, put your name, I will pull your application, get your information from there. And then I will send you out a swag bag. Um, so with that being said, um, you know, we, appreciate all of you again for all that you're doing for the military community yes. the Fisher House of Military Times Foundation would like to you know recognize all your hard work and celebrate you so please 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 apply and we hope to have you out in DC for the ceremony in October um, for questions that were not covered please email me once this live session ends um, my email address though in the chat I'm going to say it um, it is s spencer dash watson at fisherhouse.org um, I thought it was smart to hyphenate my name when I got married. So it's kind of long. So sorry. <laughs> um, and, you know, please don't hesitate to reach out if you need anything. I am honestly available and ready to help all of you. Yeah, this is awesome. Thank you so much, Shay, for all that you do. And especially, I know a lot of people are saying thank you for the time that you're taking to, you know, to go through those applications and kind of let people know if something's missing, you know, that's that's above and beyond what, what a lot of grants do. So Thank you for that. And thank you everybody for joining us. This has been amazing, especially for our first LinkedIn Live. Um, thank you, everyone.